had to call the uh, Board of Aviation Commissioners monthly meeting uh, December 9th, 2021 to order. Uh, members present, myself, Kirk Hunter, uh, Jeff Bartlett, T.Y. Okasi, uh, Greg Poulin is, ax is absent. Yeah. Um, also present, we, we have uh, Paul Schaefer from BFMS and Jessica Ward, our airport manager. We have a quorum. Okay. Uh, anybody get a chance to read the minutes from uh, September 23rd? I, I know it's a long time ago. But, uh, yes, I reviewed them this morning again. Okay. Can I get a motion to accept those? I'll make a motion to accept the uh, minutes for the uh, September media, meeting. Second. All in favor? All right. uh, motion carries. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Jessica. Account balances. We currently have used about 73% of our operating budget so far this year. Uh, we do have a few more invoices and purchase orders that are going to come out before the end of the year. Um, I'm going to submit balance transfers to cover all negative balances in our accounts. Um, we are still waiting on Comcast to correct that mistake um, on charging us for television when local government doesn't have television. Um, we, it's supposed to be free, and they've charged us for it all year this year. Um, city IT is sending another reminder to the Comcast rep um, for the city to fix that and also make sure that going forward it's not on next year's. Um, That's two hundred two dollars, right? And yeah. Well, our right. yeah, our Comcast is like two eleven well, or two eighteen. Yeah, two eighteen. But I think if I remember right, it was only like one seventy, or that's what we had budgeted. I I was gonna figure it out today and send it over to Andy, but I hadn't. So I don't know exactly how much they're charging us for TV, but whatever it is, it's made our telephone um, go to one thousand two hundred seventy four oh one is what we're negative in telephone, and we'll be positive. I'm almost sure as soon as they credit us for all of those um, TV charges on our Comcast bill. Um, so aviation fuel, we were real close, 85.18% we've used in that account. Um, we are still going to probably get another partial load of Swift fuel um, to top off the tank. They always do multiple um, airports and one truck, and so we're a partial for that. So we're going to have one more invoice for that before the end of the year. Um, but we have exactly enough to cover aviation fuel, and and that's about it for finances. We're good. Fuel prices. Fuel prices. Overall, we sold one thousand four hundred point three gallons of one hundred Lola, one thousand one hundred six point three gallons of Jet A, and one seventy two point four gallons of Swift fuel in November. Um, if you look, we're up 33% this month, down 50 in jet, and 83% up in UL94 for this month. And then at the bottom total, we're up 29% overall um, in all jet A, 100 low lead, and UL94 year to date. Um, so that's where we're sitting at, 29%. We still have one more month to go this month, which I'll report in January, and then we'll know um, how much we were over 2020's fuel sales for the whole year. But we're up for Jet A for the year, are we not? Yes, okay. Jet A, we are, uh, we've sold 35,388.2, and last year was 31,069. Oh, Under Lola's 19,379, last year was 11,993, and 2,336.6, so we're over double of UL94. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because we're the only one that sells it now, mm -hmm. so that's been really great. Yeah. So that's all I have um, for cost of fuel. We are at 441 for self-service under low lead. Full service under low lead is 456. Jet A's 335 for both self and full service. And UL94 is still sitting at 443. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Thank you. Just good. <clears throat> So the Michigan City Police Short Course Training, um, they did just come out at the end of October, set up, they were there for 24 hours, all went well, no impact to any aircraft, um, they only use about a half of the apron and they don't go anywhere over there. Um, so that went well, no issues there. Airport 2021 PCI inspection, um, we just had that done at the end of October. 
uh, the pavement condition index inspection was completed. The last inspection was done in 2015, so that was like six years ago. Mm -hmm. The primary objective of the inspection is to uh, assist individual airports in meeting the requirement to implement a pavement maintenance management program in order to receive funding for any um, project with the FAA. That's like in our FAA regulations. So the Indiana Department of Transportation Office of Aviation contracts with an inspection company to provide pavement evaluation surveys at all local airports. And uh, the airport's then able to use the inspection report to determine like any maintenance or rehab needs. Um, and we compare this, our pavement condition to like, they have a standardized benchmark that they use. And that tells you the minimum of pavement condition that's like acceptable in managing Indiana airports. So they tell us what ours is compared to what the minimum is. And then you can figure out, you know, all your rehab and improvement needs and where you need to go next and improve next. So we haven't got that report yet? We haven't gotten it yet, but they just did the inspection. So usually it's like the next year. So I'm assuming January, February is usually when we'll get it. Um, and that's when they've come out like in September in the past. I feel like they came out October this year. So before like April, I'm assuming that we'll have that and we'll be able to utilize that okay. in managing our pavement. So I didn't know if anybody even really knew about the pavement inspection stuff. So I went into a little more detail. Than no, that. appreciate it. So, okay. Um, FAA safety seminar. The airport just hosted one um, this past month. Dennis Miller, that leads the seminars in our district, he spoke on controlled flight into terrain and over-reliance on automation, stressing the fact that awareness of the limitations of automation and pilot proficiency in flying with and without automation are key to safe flight operations for all pilots. So that was what he spoke about. Um, and it was pretty well attended. And then we have the storm water testing. Our SWIP plan requires us to annually test two of our outfalls here at the airport. This year and going forward, the testing and submissions to IDEM are going to be done by a gentleman named Thomas Stevenson from um, Environmental Incorporated. He's been used by the Michigan City Port Authority for the last couple of years. He's the one that does their inspections. Um, so he is going to um, do He's going to make sure that he does the, the sampling, he's going to do the testing, and he is going to submit the reports to IDEM for us um, going forward. So I couldn't be more thrilled for that. Perfect. Where's that going to go on the budget? It's going to come out of contractual services. Okay. So that'll be great. And that's all I have. Thank you. Hey, when, <clears throat> when do we pay that? That is, he has not given me the invoice yet for it, but the proposal was 1500 annually mm -hmm. for that. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Airport development. Paul? Yes. Um, under airport development on your agenda there, uh, the first motion is on AIP 21, pay request number six, final. And that's in the amount of $25,035.38. Federal shares uh, are listed and the state shares are listed there. Now this was part of a previous grant which was conduct the environmental study and miscellaneous studies which was the ALP environmental document and all that. So unfortunately there was $22,800 um, that was uh, not able to be used um, because the uh, basically all of our agreements added up and all of the environmental fees added up came in under the total grant amount that we had estimated. So we have to turn that back. It's not recoverable because it's not entitlement or anything like that. And it was specifically line item for environmental. But you said twenty two thousand eight hundred, you meant twenty eight seven, did you not? Should I it's not recoverable? Oh, uh, there we go. Yes. So let's see. Twenty eight, yeah, twenty eight thousand seven thirty four twenty six okay. is not recoverable. Yes. So I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. Basically, we are under budget on the environmental and the planning effort, so we have to turn that money back. They don't let us repurpose it into those road design or lowering or any of that. Hmm. Can I get a motion to uh, approve <coughs> these uh, expenditures 
22,000, 1,200 twice for a total of 25,035.38. Yeah, make a motion to approve the uh, AIP 21 pay request six final in the amount of $25,035.38. Okay. Do we need individuals on that, Paul? No? Okay. No. Second. Second uh, the move. Thank you. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Motion carries. Yeah, the good news is, is we're done with environmental and planning. So Yay! everything is, is done, which is huge because we never got past that step yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in years past. So now we're at least past that. Now we all we need is uh, money to build the dark thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the easy part, right? Okay, which brings us to motion, the second motion on the agenda, I believe, on just mine. Yep. So this is the fiscal year 2022 pre pre grant pre application, and this is lines up right with what NDOT and FA want us to do this year, because they want they want us to advertise the temporary road construction and the storm sewer uh, construction, and so basically the application is for two hundred and one thousand six hundred and thirty dollars which is basically to take the temporary road and the storm and take it to 100% plans. Right now we have it at 90%, which was, it's, it's funny in the agreement, it's called NDOT stage three plan. Stage three is 90%. So it's to take it to 90% and to actually do all the, the uh, physical uh, advertising and so forth like that. So that is BFS work order number three. That's what this uh, pre-application is for and what's, what's going to fund. And that matches right up with what the FAA is expecting us to do this year. Sounds like an awful lot of money. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait till we get to the CIP. We'll <laughs> see a lot of money. I have to entertain a motion to approve this uh, pre application water of transmetal. How much is that? That was uh, Part B, correct? Uh, yeah, B. Motion to ratify the fiscal year yeah. 2022 FAA grant pre app. Mm -hmm. you said, did you oh. make a motion, T.Y.? Yeah, I make a motion okay. to accept that. I Sorry. second it. All right. All favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And then the so that will do the pre-application and the and the work order. Then the the last motion on the agenda is for um, the supplemental number two to this previous work order. 9809, which 9809 was the big agreement that designed the road lowering and the cut walls uh, for the road. There were a lot of things in there, like public hearings and plattings, that we didn't end up using. So we, uh, basically the remaining amounts in that agreement that will not be used is $87,909.51. dollars So that document is basically taking that agreement saying we're subtracting this out of this agreement and it will be closed and we're, we won't charge any more on that when it goes away. Where is this? Oh, no, I mean... Yes, I oh, the agreement? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so the, the parts, if you're curious on what comprises the 89000 there was permitting underran by $3,120. The cut wall design underran by $22,440. Utility coordination during construction. We didn't actually construct anything, so we probably shouldn't have had that in the agreement to begin with, but obviously we're not charging you for that because we didn't construct anything yet. So we subtract that back out. That's $7,900. Parcel staking, uh, we were able to get the parcel spot with a little less staking than what we thought. That's for like surveying out there. So that's $2,400. And then the geotechnical, 
that number ran by $52,049.51. And um, so since those aren't used, we're just, that's what we're subtracting them back out. Okay. Uh, are the hourly uh, rates the same as they were before, Paul? Um, well, on this, the hourly rates are from quite a while ago, 2016. But on the new hourly rate, are you talking about work order number three? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at page three of three, appendix D1, okay. schedule compensation. Yep, so that is actually part of work order number three that was in the pre-application. Oh, okay. Those, those uh, have gone up since 2016. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly precisely, but generally it's about 3% a year is what we get, uh, get employees for raises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I get a motion to uh, approve the uh, supplemental agreement number two, BMS <coughs> order number 551200.8909? I'll make a motion to approve supplemental agreement number two from BFNS work order 551200.9809. Aye, aye, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Usually no argument on giving you money back. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, and then I think the next thing on your agenda is to talk about CIP and consideration. Um, so there's a copy that looks like this. Uh, it'll test your eyes a little bit. This is the sign. Can we get one more of these? Because yep. I didn't get one. Yep. So I stole his. Oh, okay. So. There you go. Thanks. Okay. So, um, and then the picture is this first 11 by 17 that I passed out. So these, there are 14 projects listed down the side here. There are 14 items on the picture. They're color-coded. Obviously, 2022, there's no physical construction, so there's no color on the map. But that's going to be the advertising of the storm sewer and this temporary road in the green. You'll see in 2023 is the construction of the temporary road, which is this green and the storm sewer. And then we're going to um, also ask for the utility relocation agreement. I'll point that out. If you look at, uh, so 2022 on this list, that 200 and $3,630 is the exact amount you just approved in the pre-application. So that matches up perfectly for 2022. 2023, um, you'll notice now that we have uh, $2,035,719 $2 estimated for the temporary road and storm sewer. That is well under the amount that the FAA has programmed for those items. They also have another two million program for utility relocation agreements. You'll notice in there that the cost is now four point eight million dollars, and so we're about two and a two point eight ish shy of what they showed in the program to what we need in two thousand twenty-three. So uh, we're still a little ways out. There's an opportunity for them to adjust it. Of course, that number keeps is, is a moving target because we haven't actually signed the reimbursable agreement with the utilities, which they don't really want to sign the reimbursable agreement until they actually know how much it's going to cost, which means we're going to bid it. So they've agreed, um, both the water and the sewer people have agreed uh, to actually put this out to bid this April. So they're going to bid it. It doesn't mean they're going to construct it, but that'll give us a hard number. What I'm, what I'm looking at is some alternative funding options. I already reached out to USDA because they fund a lot of these things, um, but the population of Michigan City is too high for that program. It's gotta be 20,000 or less, and you're 28,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, you're too high, so that didn't work out. 
but in any case, my, my plan is, is if we run short on the FA dollar amount, that I figure out some kind of bridge financing to keep the thing moving, that would ultimately be paid back with FA funds down the road. But it's going to be hard to do half of it, uh, particularly when you're digging in the storm sewer. We really want to do the water and sewer at the same time because you got this big hole dug down there and you want to put all of the pipes in at the same time. It's hard to put some of the pipes in and then you have to dig it back up and then put some more pipes back in. So um, that's, that's the rub right now. You'll see then in subsequent years, uh, 2024, our ask is $9.6 million, which is the bulk of the road lowering. So that lowers the road, installs all the MSC wall, it puts in the piles for the future bridges, and it puts the pile caps on top for the future bridge. And then it piles the, all the dirt that uh, they cut out of there on the south side of 20, where the extension will go. We'll need more dirt, but that'll get us started. Then 2025, this is construct the actual bridge structure across and start the filling uh, in, in to the runway going back uh, towards midfield. And this is where life gets really tough for the airport because this is when you start losing runway length for until we get then into 2025. 2000, I'm sorry, 2025 is when you lose the runway length and then so you'll have a shorter runway for almost for basically a year until we get to the 2026 year where we tie the two pieces together and overlay it together so that's going to be a painful year uh, in there and of course this is all kind of dependent on cash flow uh, from do you know how long that section is that we're going to have it's uh like a little over like 2200 feet i believe so, a single engine piston, yes. Most twin engines, no. For a year, that's going to affect mm -hmm. fuel and all that stuff. Yeah. That would not affect Troy's work. No. Nope. Because he can take off on a shorter run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think the skydive plan could get up and down on that. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah I've, I've that, walked him through all this yeah. when he first came here, so yeah. he knew. Because we knew then that we're probably going to be a whole year with a shorter runway. Right. And so we talked through all that. And as long as nothing has changed from then, he was totally fine with being yeah. able to operate that year and everything. Yeah, he can probably get off the ground, no problem. It's probably getting back down is mm -hmm. the harder part for him. <laughs> well, he, he, I mean, he's using the Cessna Skywagon or whatever that is. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so... The distance, I think, that thing acts almost like a stall. Yeah. So, so that's that's kind of the program. Um, in the cover letter, I think I gave you, if I didn't give you a copy, I have hard copies here that I can pass out. Um, it's essentially the same as it was last year. Um, it simply added the last paragraph in there, which is a paragraph about uh, an alternative delivery method. This, an alternative delivery method, uh, is something besides design, build, and build. So we have already designed a road. Oh, yeah. So we've already designed the road lowering, but we haven't designed like the bridge or the runway port. Um, so, and we need all of the money for the whole thing. So there's a, there's all kinds of different alternative delivery methods in state law that you can use. And then there's a couple in the AIP handbook. So we're re gonna request a meeting with FAA to talk about, could we bring a construction manager on board to do a guaranteed maximum price. So it'd be, it's called construction manager at risk. That's one way to do it. Or there's another one that's called a public private partnership P3 or build operate transfer, but they're also called. So those, either one of those arrangements, what would, what the big advantage would be is we would lay this out for advertisement 
we would have construction managers that would actually submit a guaranteed maximum price based on our years of funding, and then we'd get that locked in before we even design everything all out. Hmm. Then we would take that price and take it to the FAA, and then they would have some assurance of these are fixed prices. Because what you see with the utility, for example, you know, that started out at two and a half million. Today it's 4.8 million. So it's like moving all over the place. So with a program this long and this complex, I thought that the FA might also be interested in locking down the pricing as soon as we can and getting a plan in place to actually get it all paid for. We didn't talk about that with them like years ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they, did they give any I want to talk Any indication that yes, no, maybe so? They said it's eligible in the IP handbook, but they don't know of anybody who's done it with a runway. Okay, yeah, I remember They that. use it for terminal buildings and parking garages and things on the more of the architectural side. So I want to kind of push on that a little bit. There are some local construction managers, uh, Tone and Blank, Cocosing, um, even possibly Reith Riley themselves might be interested in it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is whoever the construction manager is can't perform more than 20% of the work. In other words, they, they can't self-perform the whole project themselves. They have to uh, bid that out to other contractors beyond, beyond the, besides themselves. So uh, the construction manager would kind of be over the whole thing, but then they would procure the other services underneath their contract. Hmm. So I really want to kind of work on the FA and see if they would consider that. Because if they would, then when, when we advertise in 2023, rather than just advertise the temporary road and utility, we advertise the whole thing and kind of get a package together, lock down the pricing. You know, right now we're estimating this with Parallel Taxiway uh, at, you know, $33 million now. We might, it might be 23 million, but we don't know until we get somebody who's actually on the hook to build the thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I kind of want to try to get to. And uh, so that's really the major difference in the CIP from what you saw last year, other than uh, the construction costs have all gone up 30% because of inflation, electrical, asphalt, everything is up. So we've inflated the estimates and um, uh, basically then tweet the cover letter to say we want to have another meeting on construction manager uh, to see if we can't push that to fruition. So uh, this has to be approved, or that ha this particular version doesn't have to be approved, but you have to submit the CIP by February 1. Um, the earlier the better, so they have time to digest it. You know, you don't like to be at the end. So whenever it pleases you, if you're satisfied with the concept today, even if we need to tweak a little bit here or there, uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and make a motion to approve us to submit this on your behalf. I can't see any particular reason to wait. Uh, on the other hand, it's seems really a complex well, amount of work that you're going to have to do to get all these bids together. And, um, are, there, are most of these construction managers at risk, do, do they do this sort of thing all the time? Or? Yeah. Uh, most of, like, well, your local contractor right here, it's on blank, they... they right, I know he... he, he yeah, yeah, they do this all the time. Work, so he, yeah, he was very much interested in it. Yeah, they do this all the time. The only thing that is kind of unique about this is the FAA, in most cases when you do it, um, it's uh, the construction manager has some reasonable level of assurance that they're going to be paid. Right. And, and the uh, FAA, the problem the FAA has is they don't have spending authority beyond the current fiscal year that they're in. Mm -hmm. So they can say, it's our intention to fund in 23, 24, 25, 26, but they really don't have spending authority until they get to 23, 24, 25, and 26, because you're own, they can only spend money in the current fiscal year that they're in. The other thing is, you know, if, if you're looking at five years out, whatever the, the bids are gonna be, 
are going to be really high. I mean, right. unless you're a fool. Well, and so on construction manager at risk too, there is another thing. Is, is So when they procure it, I don't want to get too in the weeds in case we don't even have to do it, but it's called a guaranteed max price contract. So they put this number out there. Maybe the number is $33,917. All right. And then uh, you conduct the, the project with what's called open book pricing. So basically what that means is they lay out their formulas on how they got to the $33 million. And then as you procure the work, if something comes in under the amount, yeah. they realize some additional profit for bringing in an under, but that savings also comes to the airport. Right. So even if they have their maximum price at $33 million, mm -hmm. it could still over time come in under. And to your point, in years four and five, they're probably inflating the cost quite a bit to, to hedge their bet because nobody knows exactly how life will be five years from now. So they're building in cushion, which could add, add extra cost if there wasn't a, re, a way to recoup that. But with the open book pricing, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only thing that um, really would be bad for the contractor is if they didn't put enough in there and now it's a $40 million job instead of a $32 million job. They still are on the hook to build it for $33 million. And so that's, uh, in other words, with open book pricing, you can subtract, but you can never add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if, if, you had, if, if you had an overrun, say from $33 million to $40 million, I mean, are you just going to make them eat that? I mean, for the most part. It's, it's the price is maxed. That's why it's called guaranteed maximum price. So if, if they overrun an area, then we have to go and find it in another area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's challenging for the construction manager, but sure. that's, you know, that's why they're paid the big bucks when you advertise <laughs> it like that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, if it, if the board is satisfied with, with the plan and at least going back to the FA and asking for the alternative delivery method. I mean, the worst they're going to say is no, and then we're, you know, the, the, problem, the problem is in traditional AIP, when you're talking $33 million, you know, it becomes very tough to even fit it in a five year program for the FA. The more the cost goes up, the further the thing gets stretched out. And it's really kind of beyond the airport's control on what inflation does. You know. Yeah. Well, I make a motion that we, you know, we approve the, the give the allowance to <coughs> make a proposal for the FAA. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That was really my last official thing of business. I, I gave you a, a print out of the maintenance building location. Is that on the agenda anywhere? Yep. Okay. So we can talk about that now. I know Jessica wants to try to nail that down. Yes, I do. Yep. This is for the the building, the new maintenance facility. Oh. So this would be events and just like transit, you know, if transit needs like pull in there or something and just events. And then we would have all of the maintenance stuff is going to go to a, into a building that's big enough to house all of our maintenance. That would be really great, wouldn't it? And so um, we've already been approved by the council. All of it's been approved. Um, our building's been approved for whatever Paul's engineering estimate was for that. Okay. Um, so hopefully we don't go over that, or else hopefully that was the maximum amount, and Paul's just going to cover anything right, over right. that because <laughs> because yeah, that'd be great. Um, so now we just need to figure out wh where to put the building. So Paul 
So the thing is, is like, of course, we own a lot of land out here, right? So we could really put it anywhere. But the problem is, is we do a lot of work in there. So we don't want to be like way far away from the terminal building and not know people that are coming in or, you know, planes that are coming in. So it needs to be somewhere near this area. Um, so Paul and I were trying to figure out where we could put this building to where we can kind of see what's going on, like the parking lot, the ramp, the terminal area, um, know when planes are coming in and out and not be too far away, um, but also save room just in case, you know, we have that bigger hangar that's coming with the jet center and everything later um, when our extension goes through. So we can't really use this land. So it's kind of like we're trying to fit it in here. Mm -hmm. And so the place that um, it looks like Paul tried to find is like behind. So if you look like this, this is our ramp. We're, you know, here in the terminal building. So this is our parking lot. And so it'd be kind of in that right behind us here mm -hmm. um, in that area. Um, kind of right off the parking lot is kind of where he has it. So these are trees right here. You can kind of see where the trees are in here. Yeah, and the building itself is kind of sitting under i mean there's a couple of trees that have to be cleared off of this corner yes. but it's relatively clear there is a hill that needs to be cut out of there because mm -hmm. there's a ditch here this is a ditch yeah and then this whole thing is a ditch here right, or right here okay. so this is the old um this is a terminal building. yep here. that's the terminal this now is your, that's our current the hangar. Current yep, right there. there. So you're going to go back a little ways. Yeah. Yep, so right behind it. Mm -hmm. You and can the, see it on the board behind it, better picture with the trees mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it'd be, so here's our ramp and everything. So this, we have this big spot. So we would take out a little bit of these trees, and it would be right back here. Yeah. Off the parking lot. And the, and the reason we didn't build it just right behind with the door facing the parking lot was uh, the idea that you could expand the parking lot across and have, have more parking there. That's a good idea. But the issue, this, so you'll see the drive, we're calling an alternative out to access the airfield this way. I mean, if you build this back here, you could bring the equipment through this gate, but that's not necessarily ideal. Yeah, because Kirk and I were talking about that, and it's like the tractor is not going to fit through two line of cars right there. So we wouldn't even be able to pull it through the parking lot anyways. Like if there are people parked in this back, like this, right, exactly where this Google Earth shows people parking, there is no way the tractor is going to fit in there, in between there. Like the, the parking lot, this whole middle section would have to be cleared, and we don't really have a lot of parking as it is. Right. Like for events or things like that, we can't like block off part of this parking lot in order to be able to get the tractor through. So we would have to do some sort of alternate drive. And then coming over here, you know, like this is that new area. I think we definitely need to make sure that we can access it either way because here we have people turn around in here, pull their planes back and park here, you know, when they like come inside and stuff because this is our self-service. Right. And so it's like if this is blocked, we're not going to be able to get through either. Right. So it's kind of like it's just making sure that we have multiple access points to uh, hopefully we can get in and out one way or another. Yeah. Unless we did our own, like, drive off this this way, you know what I mean? Like on the back side of the parking lot because this is a ditch. I mean, we'd have to fill this in. Just more expenditure, right? Paul is going to come. They could always use it as a backup, right? Come out here, then just yeah. an aggregate. Well, where's the yeah, and then the thing I don't know about the aggregate is the fuel trucks. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the rules are with. Because well, I mean, those things are heavy, and you know. Where's the fence that we right now? The fence right now is like right here, where the tree line is, is where the fence is. Okay. Yeah, but that. So fence, the fence goes through this. You know what I mean? That fence really doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's just that's like a really right. old fence that we this used to have. This is the fence that matters. That's the wildlife fence. So even if we went this way, we're going to need to put a big enough rolling gate that you can get the equipment through. Yeah. And yeah. this is very wet. wet. It's not ideal. So this was, you know, I don't know if if you back, if you block off the back row and you can use use that and force everybody to park up here. But I don't know if that's. I mean, that would literally give us only like 14 parking spots in the parking lot. 
I don't know why, but I don't like the idea of our having to take our equipment through the yeah the, the rolling gate. I, it, it just doesn't seem like we should have a better access so that you don't have to do that. You know, if the, well, if the gate mean, goes down all of a sudden. You, we you can know. build this building over here. It's just taking that future spot. But there's no guarantee that somebody's going to come there with any building. No practice. And those are just been kind of prognostications. People mm -hmm. just right. saying, I'm going to do this. But Yeah, I mean, the cheapest thing, for sure, is to plop it right here and tie into the... And it is the right to rent. I mean, you have direct access from Which there. would be perfect. I mean, we've walked that out before to figure out where the 67 by 76 foot could fit. Remember, right out here, we walked it and stuff. But the other, there's another thing that we have to think about, too, is this fuel farm, it's, it's going to be at its end of life at some point. Okay. And, and so you can't build right over where your underground tanks are. Yes. So we need to have room for this somewhere too up here. We don't have any other ramp. This is the only ramp we have. So we just, that's one thing that, you know, talking to Paul, we have to be careful on that because we are eventually gonna have to go to above ground fuel. And, and so we need to make sure that we have somewhere around here, you know, where fuel can actually be on the tarmac or next to the tarmac. And it can't be in the same spot. What about the, right? what about the space on the other side? I mean, what prevents building on that side where the, that those old dilapidated buildings are? Remember where they used to park there? Yeah, that's gonna, it's gonna be all raised up there to, for the runway extension. I'm, I'm talking about the buildings that yeah. the guy wanted to sell for exchange. Bless him. Oh, RL Roofing, mm -hmm. that place? I mean, um, that, that, I, I'm thinking about possibilities. I mean, you could drive directly from there mm -hmm. all across and you would have you know, clear some of those trees, you'd have direct access. You could see the runway, you could see what's going on. That's another option. It's just that it's further from the terminal than, yeah. than you would like. Well, we went and worked at the building over there. It's they, they are going to go. I mean, those things are just yeah. need to go. We would yeah. have to. Yeah. But there, it's, a, it's a prime space. I agree. For you. Uh, T.Y. So the, the issue is the time frame on when Jessica wants to, I mean, she wants to procure this basically in January, February. Because our money is 2022. <coughs> That's when we built this. Then, do it. then I, w I would be going for that space there rather than this, this back, because this seems to hedge, seems to hang you in yeah. a little bit, and, and then you're looking at access points. And that's a little more difficult than putting it here, where you have direct access, you just tie into. Well, you're talking about putting it someplace out yeah, here. Yeah, because right now this like is the right fence here. line right here. This is our wildlife fence right here. Mm -hmm. Right, but you're, you're still going to have to have a road that's going to get because you can't drive right here, right? No, because we have a big light here. And there's a oh, no, it's farm. not here. It's like the lights right here. Right there. Well, so you you're going to still have to yeah, get around to the, the apron that sticks yeah. out right here. And, and this thing, why? This should, shouldn't come to here. It should, this should go around. Right? Go all the way around. That's because if, if we have airplanes that are parked with their tail out over here, we can't actually Yeah, we just want to be able to go all the way around it. The fuel farm, why can't you go right here? Because you got some fuel on the tanks are buried there. Yeah. Oh, right behind it. And what, what you what did you just say about when you go to above ground, you can't do what, what was you it? can't go over the underground tanks because you right. have years of. But I mean, it's not virgin soil. You don't know. Yeah. It'll there's a risk. So if you when you most people find another site because when you pull the old tanks out. If everything's hunky dory, you can pull the tanks out and backfill it. It's like and going down the road. But if you find any trace contamination or anything, then you got to dig it out and do some monitoring. Okay, Paul. Yeah. Here's the question. I, I mean, within your possibilities in engineering, mm -hmm. how can, I mean, the buildings can stay here, but what is the best possible option to get, to give them access to get? to 
here, from here, if the building stays here. Seems ideal here, but how do they get from here without what Kirk is saying, getting through all of this? <laughs> what, why couldn't we just come right through here? We're, are you just going to go through the light pole? <laughs> So, well, we can't move the light. <laughs> I suppose you could. I mean, anything is possible, but yeah. So, I mean, ideal. I don't know. Do so, is there a way to maybe. figure out a route? Oh, yeah. You know, without getting to the tanks here. Um, I mean, I think every. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but what's what's your pilot? Um. I think it's, um, I don't know, this is a nine foot. So, I mean, everything but should fit through this we, gate. That's initially, we threw it back here, really we didn't have this on here. Back towards the light. And, pushed and it we thought, back, like the whole new building you know, all these vehicles here are size right to fit on the normal start over, over, yeah, this light except pole. for, Take this you building. put a bat wing bow on there, you have a flat, that's going to be your biggest thing. The question is, is can you get in and out of that gate? I mean, they, they, if they can fit through the gates. The dimensions, right. so how wide is that gate? Yeah. 60, 67. That's more than 12 foot. Yeah, we, the, the tractor would be able to come through there. The thing that we're worried about is getting it through vehicles. You have to drive it with, like, the big bat wing wings up. You have to, it's driving it through lines of cars here. That's the thing that we have to be careful of. So, like Paul said, we would literally, no joke, have to block off this whole line. Like, we would lose all this back parking, this is which is, I mean, you see the lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like, we would lose, like, 12 cars here. And, I mean, you can only fit, we would literally have a parking lot of only, like, 14 then. Well, I think, I, I think so that's for I said, a short we, term, I mean. If we did some sort of pavement back here. Yeah, you could pave that out I right mean, there. I mean, that would be the best option. I think. Are you saying then you don't need this row right here? Just have it go straight out like I this? I think this is kind of a bad, swampy idea. So. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to get it, especially if it's just yeah. aggregate, like crush aggregate. There's no, I I would not take a jet truck through there. I'm telling yeah. you right now. So are you saying so that? If you're going to build it back here, I think your primary access to the airfield mm -hmm. is, is through there. Would you put the doors over here then? Are you saying and have like an access road? straight back here that way you can still expand the parking lot if you want to so have that when we were originally talking a while ago there were garage doors on this because we're not having a big overhead door like this yeah. so it was just regular garage doors on one side and the other because what would make it or even over here i don't care where it is because the whole point is is you want to be able to have the tractor be able to go straight out and like the jet trucks go straight out but also all the mowers are back here then yeah, you don't so want to move you all want, the equipment yeah, it's like to get something point. else out. With the big doors, we literally have to move everything around in order to get anything out. But it would yeah, be so nice to not have to do that. This is all wetland back here, so that's what we can't really go that way right. too much more. But yeah. if we if we shifted it this way, then you could potentially have doors on each side, and. Or you could do doors on this side and doors on that side. I suppose. Well, this is higher up here, so this isn't wet. Right, but how, oh, so it's then the parking lot around like this? It just like an aggregate drive, I think, would be fine okay. here because it would just be like mowers back here. I like that for the mowers and then having a door like TY suggested or whatever and have yeah, access like, come out here. Because, I mean, you're really, you're not having this thing open up like 40 times. I mean, you know, you're not really going in and out, in and out all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it allows you to expand the parking lot if need be. If so that's get rid of this? Right? I think so. I like that open space there. It's more grass, right? Put doors here and here and yeah. have a Yeah. Have just like an aggregate apron out the backside mm -hmm. and they drive around on the grass here. Yeah. Yeah, that should be fine because well, it would just be you can take that out and just paint that. I mean that's create more space there. Well this is grass right here. Yeah, just take it out. Yeah, I'll just yeah. keep it grass. Probably. Yeah, but you can be driving heavy equipment on it. So it won't well, the equipment's going to be coming out this way, right? What about the, you, know, you said? And the tractors? Yeah, just like the mower. Just like your yeah. mower. Because there's not going to be any doors here then. So this will just be open open space here. Yeah, well, then when you expand your parking lot here. Yeah, you then you can do that, the I guess. Same scheme. Yeah. Scheme going. I mean, I think that's why. Um, yeah, I kind of wish Greg was here. Because initially we had it. 
just spun around like this with doors facing the parking lot. Then he just pulled out and, you know, went to the parking lot. But then the idea was push it back so you got out of the line so that if you want to pave this all out in here and have parking in there, you can someday. And then you have a little pathway from here to here. So you can still access the old. Right? Is there a back door on there? Yeah, there's yeah. one. There's like a, just a man door mm -hmm. in this back corner right here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, why are you so go ahead. Well, when you when you talk why don't you know rather than come out this way and go wherever they're going the, the mowers why don't they just come through here right through here and the mowers can get through with um, the light stanchion right there right but I mean, we don't need to put a gate here then. You know what I mean? Because they could just come out this way. It's just grass. So they would just ride around on the grass. It just depends on if we have three doors here. Because we have three big things that need pavement in front of them. The jet truck, the avgas truck, and the tractor. Those can't just like go on. Especially this gets really wet, like back in here and stuff, yeah, yeah. where this building yeah, well. is. So we just have to be careful with that. So we need those to be able to go out. Like, I don't, I don't know if there's room here to have three. I don't know how any of that works. Well, but if you're going to build. And then the you're, mowers you're gonna, can go out anything, pretty much, like you're be, saying. You're going to pave this section, right, where these vehicles are going to be able to. I don't know if you have enough money to do that. Yeah, because he did the engineering. Est I don't. He told me what whatever he thought I should put in there for the estimate. And I remember it was at like 180, and then we moved it up to like 220 or something like that, right? And that was for, like, groundwork and stuff. But that was when it was going to be over here. It, we weren't going to have to do all this extra stuff, right? Right. The, site, the paving. Right. So if we got rid of this here and we had just paving for a garage door right behind here, how much extra would that be for one, one line to get yeah. to this road, you think? Well, it's not just one line because you've got I mean, three one, doors and you have to have enough width. To, to turn and everything, can, maneuver. Yeah, 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 to yeah, maneuver, yeah. right. So it would those be, are not easy to, I mean, the, the fuel truck is heavy. Yeah. So you don't want And to, this also is a ditch. This yeah. is a ditch yeah. right here. And this is high. It's like a hill. It goes like up a hill. I don't know if you can really, yeah. you can't really tell, I don't think, on this. No, because the trees are covering all this. Oh. You know what I mean? Because this is all like... That's where the gap is. I was envisioning the exit kind of more to the east, and then you just have to create a connection that would be a future park paid parking lot to the parking lot. But I understand you got to get through all the cars to get over there. That's the... Uh, that's the route, I suppose. Seems to me that's the only spot that you have, you will not have issues put in the building there without conflict to all these other, you know, swampy, you know, <laughs> fuel stuff conflict down there. So, but yeah, maybe, the only other place is over here, but that's where you know the other proposed thing mm -hmm. possibly is going to go one day. Yeah. So okay. the, the 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 other option could be to look for a way to fundraise. We can do a major fundraise and use that fund to build this, you know, stuff here. Um, you know, like a a, a winter something. I mean, I think the mayor would allow that, right? I mean, just talk to people in the community, Jeff, you know, make all the connections for us, and just tell them what it's for, and then use that money for just that. $50,000 would do a... That is, if you need that access from here to get to this point here. How far of a width for a road access? Like, looking out here, just a window here? 
you can always have this road like you put here. It can go right here alongside the old That's what I thought. building. Just one straight road. So how wide right is that thing? How wide is your widest? The, the fuel truck can go I mean, through you there. Easily get it yeah, the tractor would fit through here door, too, but we'd but have to move road this pole. Over here and just run it with dry. Yeah. Yeah. Move yeah. this little gazebo. Why do you, where, what do you think is right? going to go through there? I'm confused. Oh, yes. is, uh, well, the fuel truck, you've got already had the door, fuel truck. On the other side, really. You know, you had a road right there. But you just have the road come straight out. Yeah. We should have had that pole over when you put it in. Well, yeah. but even that, I mean, honestly, you don't have to. I mean, you know, you could get it. If we move the door to the other side, you don't have to worry about somebody actually opening the door up and coming up, but you would have a, a separate access road that goes right along the side here and straight out to the ramp. Don't have to change anything. And then all that back there is grass, mm -hmm. and that's where your main building is. But Jessica, what do you think? You yeah, I would just, I mean, we would just have to try it out and see how why. I mean. I think I think we're going to, too, the cost estimates were not even in 2021. So that's concerning me a bit, too, because we've seen so much in cost. You know, right. Yeah. Cost yeah. Yeah. So why don't we do, why don't we focus on getting the building there? We just have to decide where which way you want the doors oriented, and then a future phase. I mean, we can advertise these as alternate items, driveways. We can even say pave it, you know, how much it is to pave it. And then, but the base bid will be the building and just enough aggregate or maybe a strip of pavement to get connected to some hard right. surface so that you got, and then in the future, if we want to build that road in or whatever, that could be a later phase. I like the building there. It keeps it back here for aesthetics, allows room here commercially or what have you. So do you guys want the doors? See, the doors here, like Jessica said, there's trees and there's a ditch over there. That's why we had all the doors. So the new doors would be here. Right. Like, yeah, and I think that's why it was in. And so you had three doors here, and then I don't know how many doors we had. I didn't think we had full three doors on the back, but... I don't remember. But we could put three doors there, three doors there, and then your mowers and things could come out the back around this edge. But your hard surface would be planned to be on that side. I like that because the low mowers can get out on the grass, and then the heavy trucks, eventually, we could just figure out and go straight through here. Yeah. I like that one. I think that's a good idea. Uh, I don't like anything to happen to that gazebo. That, that's one of my lunch. Oh, we're not yeah, going to get rivets. I would just... <laughs> we have lots of people who use that. We're just have to move it. Just move it. I mean, I've, I've had lunch yeah. there so many times. I, mean, I love that. Little yeah, there. You can move it. People around. use it all summer long. Good. So that looks cool. That I that looks good. So we'll just do that, and then that's it. Well, good. Okay. That's what I like. Done deal. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Another like plan. We'll advertise it. Yeah, okay. cost. Don't freak me out. Uh, don't uh, yeah, yeah, and just hope that we get the, the money's been allocated, right? Yes. Well, so, next year, January first. Okay. So we let's have not to make sure. Yeah, we have to make sure we have a project that fits the budget. That's the issue. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different things you could do, but we only have so much money to work with. Right? So what's the next step? Engineering, you're going to come up with the... We're not actually going to engineer We're just going to come up with a scope. And so this will be more of a design build because these pole barns, you don't need me to design Correct. a building. The, so All we're going to say is give us a building that's so many square feet, these dimensions, with these doors, we want a concrete floor in it, we want this heat, we want these lights, all that. So it's basically called a performance-based specification. Mm -hmm. We come up with that specification, it's very simple. We have one sheet layout, performance spec, and then you want it simple too, because the contractors that are building pole barns, they're not used to building complex airport projects. Yeah. So you want it to be as open as you can so that your local people who are doing very simple buildings are able to compete on it, right? Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't need to be complex. It's a pole barn. Yeah. So it's we want to keep it's it. It's a utility. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We want to keep it as simple as we possibly can so that the prices, if we build a whole bunch of plan sheets and all kinds of stuff, then it'll drive the cost to the rate. Mm -hmm. What about, what about uh, um, insulation? 
You gonna specify a blown in or? Uh, well, I mean, we can, whatever you want. Normally on a pole building like that, they usually, if you insulate it, it's just like that vinyl bat, R19 vinyl bat. You could go a little thicker on the roof if you want for heat loss. Yeah, I mean, it's just like maintaining the old hangar. Mm -hmm. You can have it insulated, you have the heater, right? Yeah. Are they going to use it as a workshop? Water? Yeah. All right, so we definitely let's get it insulated. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's going to need to be insulated and have fans well, well, so and better lighting than this. So that is going to be a, a, a what? A workshop? Workspace? Yeah, workspace. Yeah, oh, work space. Okay. yeah a workshop. Yeah. 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 yeah, just for utilities and stuff. Yeah. 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 For this, it's the It's going to be this, but there. So this is going to be totally empty. Yeah, yeah. And okay. it's going to be for events, and I'm going to make it pretty. It's no, going to be hard, but I'm making it pretty. <laughs> and we're turning this into a, a nice event area, a nice and you event put space. An airplane in there if you need it to. Correct. And that's what my plan is, is any transit airplane that needs to be pulled in is fine. Or if we need to keep the truck in there for whatever we can, you know what I mean? But it's like it's going to be a multi-purpose kind of space to where we can use it for multiple things. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with that. However you describe it, you need to have the word airplane in there and keep that happy. <laughs> I mean, it's got a big hangar door on it, so. I mean, you could fit two airplanes, three airplanes in there, right? Uh, probably two. Two. Maybe three if they don't need to go anywhere, you know, and they're just off in like the back or something. Yeah. Okay. In the old business? None. Okay. New business. What is this thing here? Oh, this is under new business. Okay. Good. We're almost there. Good. Legal services retainer. You guys got a chance to look at that? I emailed it over. Yep, I read it. it seems standard. So yep. we're retaining a um, no. bill? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, good. these raises hourly $10? $10, $10 an hour. And he hasn't raised it in the last two years, so I think that's fair. Okay. I get a motion to approve the legal services. Mm -hmm. we'll make a motion okay. that we approve the legal services, retaining um, attorney deal. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, so hangar A52 Rental Flight Saga Incorporated. Where should we start? <laughs> I had a chance to look at the contract. It looks so, scared. So, um, Thor, this gentleman, Thor yeah, he came up to uh -huh. us and um, was talking about doing, wanting to do a flight school and a flying club here at the airport. Um, he has talked to Jeff multiple times on having simulators, um, putting one in possibly like Michigan City High School, um, something like that. He wants his flying club to be for um, young people. He's going to have a reduced rate because he's trying to get youth involved in aviation. That's one of his big goals. Um, with his flying club and flight school, um, he was on the board at Laporte for a couple years. Um, I don't remember when that was. I think he put it in his I think his he was bio CEO for five or eight years for the uh, Laporte Hospital. Yeah, there. so he lived here, but he just um, bought a house again here. Um, super swell guy. He's really well known in the community, really well known um, around. And so he came up with a flight school business plan and flying club um, plan um, to do that here. And so he would operate out of the hangar that the airport owns and rent that hangar. Um, Temporarily, because he just eventually he wants to get Yeah, because it's not big enough for him. And then go something for, you know, himself. Yep. Which I think is a great idea. Yeah. And so... He'd probably be there a couple of years, though, would he not? He wanted a one-year one year lease with um, an, a one-year extension option. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have that. And when is this, um, when is he planning to begin all this operation? January 1st is when he wants to be in the hangar, or January is when he wants to be in there. Um, when, he, when does he want to start the operation? It's a different matter to occupy a hangar space mm -hmm. and put stuff in there, but we are giving him access because there is a program, right? Correct. There's something he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Just like Troy came 
He set up his deal yes. and he was up flying. Correct. So. so he has set up the company and organization structure by the end of 2021. He's done with that. Acquire at least one primary instruction plane by the first quarter of 2022. He's done with that. And a second plane in the fourth quarter of 2022, which is on order and substantial deposit made. That is the RV-6. Um, increased number of types of airplanes over five years. Acquire and gain access to a flight simulator in the first quarter of 2022. His quote is obtained and the order, he wants to place the order as soon as he knows that the board's going to approve the lease in there because he's putting a simulator in there. And so he's buying it literally tomorrow if, if this lease is approved. He's eventually going to add another Redbird ATD flight simulator. Um, he wants to build, purchase, or lease a large heated hangar with enough space to house three to five airplanes, which ours isn't, um, to be completed by 12-31-2021. So he's going to go into here for now. You know what I mean? Like this hangar. He's got three instructors, I think, that I read it correctly. Yep, team maintenance with training. a top shop that ensures short downtime for aircraft, which he's done. Paul Aviation is who's going to do all of his maintenance on his airplanes. That's the They're the hangar across from him. Okay. Um, so he he's very serious about it. He's very excited about it. Um, and I'm going to write two grants from Michigan City Airport for the high school. I'm going to try to get, or for the uh, junior high, Krieger and Barker. I'm going to try to get two of those simulators that he wants to use. I spoke with, I uh, can't remember her name, over at Barker. And I already missed the deadline for this year. But I think we really can do it since this is for the kids. Each simulator is about $8,000. Mm -hmm. And speaking to... Uh, Ms. Eason Watson, Dr. Uh, Eason Watson, sounds like they want to help participate, but it's more of getting the kids at a younger age involved, mm -hmm. and that's what we need to do. So if we can get it in the junior high program, get the kids involved by that time when they get up to high school, then they're really yeah, pumped kind of forward mm -hmm. on there. And I think I, we can get these grants to get that money from the, I think it's the Blue Chip Casino, but I missed it for November. Yeah. So I'm going to compare it next I, year. I, I, and so here's a plan you just bought. Okay, that's a Cessna 172. Yeah. Cessna 150. 150. Oh, 150. Yep, mm -hmm. and so he's going to use it for private pilot and instrument training. Okay. Um, so he, he already bought that. I have no issues. I mean, you know, I as long as he comes in and he starts the program, mm -hmm. I mean, we've had snap fools in our trying to build an airplane here. It's been almost three years we've been trying to. So if we have an individual who, I mean, a CEO, he must have some base, uh, financial base. So yes. he's not going to suffer like some of us pee on little Yeah, he's, he yeah. said that if he's not going to need any loans for this so, big yeah, project yeah. or so anything. I, I, yeah. I would yeah. make a motion that we, we accept this and, and allow him to set up his deal right away. Okay. I Thank second you. it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you very much. I think it's going to be good. I think it's great. It's going to be so oh, um, great. What about the, uh, the, the no, the uh, uh, price for the rental? Yeah. The, well, nobody, the had a pri yeah nobody had a problem with that price that was the in the email. No, I read it. Okay. How much is that? Six. Six. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Sounds okay. like it's the going rate for this uh, area. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all right. Thank you. Okay. Good. Because he's, he's got expenditures, too. I mean, he's, he's right. going to be buying fuel. He's going to be doing a lot of stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. So yeah. 600 is, is, a, is fair. So, thank you. That's good. Where, where? Yep, and then nobody saw anything else that needs to go in the lease, you don't think? or I Because I rated right NIPSCO. I changed that to where it's going to have to go in his name, like once he's in there. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. And then um, what else did we add? Oh, we added because they have the Wi-Fi in there. City IT has their their big box for Wi-Fi to the hangers and stuff in there. So I added a clause. Had Bill, I didn't add it, of course, but had Bill add a clause in there that they can get him 24-hour notice into the hangar, which is our hangar anyway. So we're gonna have a key, but just so he knows, you know what I mean. I'll That's give nice. him notice and let him know. Hey, we're gonna need to access the box or whatever in there because it's like a lock box and. You know, special. It's like an apartment rental. You know what I mean? Stuff. If you got to do maintenance on the building, you, I mean. But Thor's already seen the lease. He's already looked over the um, agreement. Nice. I already gave him all of our minimum standards. He can meet all the minimum standards. He sees no problem with those. Um, and so this this business plan and stuff is part of the minimum standards. That's a requirement for operating here. 
So he gave us these, and then there's some like financials and stuff that he'll have to give us, and insurance, meeting the insurance requirements, and all that thing. And this is the first time, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, we've never had something like this. Uh, a flight school? No, we've had a flight school thing. here with Art. I mean, yeah, Art he's been a new. flight instructor. Okay. Yeah, yes. so he's okay. done flight instruction. And, and Dale did a little bit of that years back, right? I mean, yeah. but um, he's pretty. But yeah, this would be like the fl a flight school, and we've never had a flying club. That's going to yeah, be super yeah, exciting. Yeah. That's encouraging. I know Kirk's going to join the flying club, oh, yeah. and Jeff's going to join the flying bucks. club. Twenty bucks? How can you beat that? What are you flying? Though? What is? What are you going to be flying? These planes. You're going to right now a one fifty, and then eventually an RV twelve. Well, I'm going to fly three twenty to one fifty. I haven't touched a smaller plane over twenty years, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to need some dual instruction yeah. over here so I don't scare myself. <laughs> yeah. 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 Come, come, come fly with me. Yes. You might fly a little high. The last time I did that was 20 years ago. Where I'm like, we're going 69. Yeah, so I was like, 50, 60, uh, 50, we're gonna 70. we're gonna fall out of the sky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I landed on the thousand foot marker and stopped on the thousand foot marker. Recently, a United <laughs> Airlines pilot crashed a Cessna 172. Oh no! Trying to land it. You know, it's that's just, what gets you in trouble. Yeah, I mean, it's not that he's not a pilot. It's just the the orientations are different. Right. I mean, you, what you, you gotta do is take a picture when you when you take off before you even start rolling. So this is where you gotta put be. it off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> this is you know, this is low. This okay. is the perspective. <laughs> this is you want. Then, hey, my visual cues. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. excellent. Well, good. Okay. Uh, claims document. Uh, did everybody get a chance to look at it? Yes, I did. Again? Mm -hmm. Never hands. Uh, Twelve, nine, right? Twelve, nine. God, I'm getting too old for this. Never. Four more years to you like four years. Did you go down and sign your stuff? Uh, I'm going this after this meeting. Okay. And you know where the post office is? But... No. I've been there before, but I don't remember. Okay. I will. You get it done with me? I'll just let you know how to get into the building. Into it. We're going to lunch after. Can I get a motion to approve the claims docket? I'll make a motion to approve the claims docket for uh, December, December 9th. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Right. Public comment? None. Thank you. None. <laughs> Thanks for us. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Can I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting at this time? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. Right. Thanks.